Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Section 14.8 is when we have optimization, but we have a constraint. Constraint optimization, where we have this function f that we like to maximize or, or, or minimize, and there is a constraint. Call that constraint some function g. And so we're looking for the point on the graph that also satisfies the constraint curve, giving the biggest z value, um, the biggest z value as possible. Sometimes it's um, a function of x, y, and z, so we can say like a w value as large as possible. But um, we're going to exploit the fact that um, on the function f, there's a gradient. On the constraint g, there's a gradient, and there's a, they have a relationship to each other. Um, we had saw, I think it was maybe a couple lectures ago, that when you have level curves for your multivariable function, that the gradient is always um, at a right angle to any level curve. And so what we're looking for are places where the, the level curve and the, the constraint function g places where they, they intersect. So I have different level curves here at different heights, z. Um, and I want to be on the surface. I want to be, I want to be a solution to f of x, y. Um, I want to have some z value that's... At the same time, though, it's a solution to the, the, the constraint curve, g. And so I look for intersections between the level curves of f and the curve g. So I have this curve G, and, 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 and actually, you know, just add a different variable and it's a surface. And our level surfaces can actually be, our level curves can actually be surfaces if we just add another variable. And so we search for these, these intersections, and there are, there are many of them. And we want to see, of the intersections, where I'm solving both at the same time, of those, which one gives me the highest um, function value, F or, or Z. And so... With, with each different f being a different height, z, we go and find out that uh, this is the one we, we desire. There are these other ones, but they're at, different, they're at lower heights if we're, if we're talking about maximizing. And so we're going to say that basically it's going to be that we're looking for the places where not only this, is, this isn't an accident what's going to happen here, the largest value of your function is going to occur not just where these two curves touch each other, but basically, better than that, they have a common tangent line. The tangent line to the curve, G, is the same as the tangent line to the level curve. They share that in common. At the point where this is as large as possible, they have common tangents. Okay. And we can think about the tangent as a tangent vector, and common just meaning that they should um, be scalar multiples of each other. The, the vectors associated with the tangent will, should be scalar multiples of each other. And so the gradient on F should be some scalar multiple of the gradient on G. They are, they are parallel at that point. And this is the equation that will drive Lagrange multipliers. The scalar multiple is usually used as the, um, the symbol there is the Greek letter lambda. Okay, and so the gradient on F is some constant lambda times the gradient on G. And this is what governs your, your whole solution method, this equation here. Okay. And so we have, they, they share this, uh, they share this common tangent and then we had said that the gradient is perpendicular to the tangent. And so this guy would be the gradient on F. And then this guy would be the tangent, I don't know, call it T, the tangent to F. Um, the tangent to G could point in the other direction as long as it's parallel, though. It doesn't have to be as long. And then um, so they share the fact that their gradients will point in the same directions. Gradients are, gradients are normal, basically, 
um, to the level curves. And so how you go about solving it is um, it varies. I'll show you one way to do it. And then if you prefer a different way, when we do our examples, I'll, I'll, um, I'll show a full slide of solving it a different way. But this is the equation that governs everything, that, that their gradients are scalar multiples of each other. Any questions on the, on the setup of it? You okay with it? OK. Oh, I see your question. I'm sorry. Hi, what's your name? Might have been. So the question is, if you're trying to maximize, and they, yes, they do have a common tangent, why are we using tangent? Why are we using the gradient? Yes. Very good question. And so um, the, the best answer I can come up with that is that um, you know, the gradient is made up of, the, what is this gradient? The gradient is this vector that has these partial derivatives in it, at, and maybe more if, if it has more variables. And so back when we were doing chapter 14.7, the last section, we were trying to maximize and minimize function. And it required us to take these partial derivatives and set them equal to each other. I mean, I'll set them equal to zero. I guess we could set them equal to each other, too. Now, if we were to use the tangent, that's not using these partial derivatives. And so um, it, is, it is analogous to what we were doing back then. And to use the partial derivatives, we're going to have to deal with the gradient instead. It is true that the tangents are parallel. We could go with that. But um, to, to tie it into maximizing, then we need these first partials involved. And so we need gradients involved. OK? All right. You OK with that? OK. I think what I'll end up doing, though, is creating a new function. And most times when I do it, I end up taking this equation and setting it equal to 0. I, li I like to solve equation equals 0 rather than you know, an equation in this form. Because when an equation is set equal to zero, there's things you can do algebraically to exploit that. You can factor out and take advantage of the fact that it's set equal to zero. And so when I go to solve a, a Lagrange multiplier problem, most times when I do it, I, I set up this guy equal to zero. I subtract the, the minus lambda g, um, I mean minus uh, lambda times the gradient on g. I subtract that over and set it equal to zero. You don't have to do it that way. And so um, when we solve an example, and if I do it that way, on the next slide, I'll show you a full example of it solved using this actual version of the equation. OK. You're just saying the same thing. And so I, I'll go with this. I'll shift the, the minus lambda gradient g over to the other side. And I, I prefer to solve it equal to 0. And so I create what, what happens then. If you're going to do it this way, though, there's some, some, some things that you need to do with your g. Um, you're, you're basically going to create a, a, a new function. You're going to create a new function. Unfortunately, what's normally used to denote that function is a capital letter F. But um, you're going to need to, on top of that, creating that new function, um, capital F, which is it's going to be the subtraction of these two. Um, the, the function G sometimes is not set equal to 0. Sometimes it's something like where we have um, x squared plus y squared equals to 25. And so um, in order for this method, um, in order for doing it this way to work, uh, what you need to do is uh, set that equal to 0, where if you have x squared plus y squared equals 25, just, just uh, subtract the 25 over. I'll show you why you need to do that. But um, what we're doing is creating this capital F function, where we take the, the function we want to maximize, that's the lowercase f, and we subtract from it lambda times our constraint function our constraint function set equal to zero. And what we're going to do is, is take the, the partial derivatives of this multivariable function capital F. We're going to take the x partial, the y partial, and the lambda partial. Lambda, we're going to think about it as a variable, although you know it's, it's a constant of uh, to make these vectors um, scalar multiples. It is a multiple. But taking the lambda partial, if we set it up this way by setting g equals zero, taking the lambda partial just makes sure that the, um, the curve G is, um, is satisfied. So we take fx, set it equal to 0, fy, set it equal to 0, and then also the f lambda, set equal to 0. And by us shifting the, um, the constants over and setting G equal to 0, then as we're solving it, we really end up not um, focusing too much on the last lambda, you know, on the last um, lambda partial here. 
because it's just analogous to saying make sure that you're satisfying your constraint at the same time that you're satisfying these x and y partials being equal to zero. And so um, what you're doing then, if you go with this version of it, is you're just taking component-wise the, the statements from the first, the, um, the first statement on this slide, you're looking at the components of it. The, um, the, the partial with respect to x on little f minus lambda times the partial with respect to uh, x on little g, that, that, that i component is, is what you're saying um, when you say capital Fx is equal to zero. And then the, the j component is what you're saying when you're saying um, the y partial on f is equal to zero. It's just a different take on it. It's nothing wrong with doing it uh, this way. If you don't like this way at all and you want to just go with this, this first um, version of, of the equation, that, that works great too. And I'll, I'll show you um, problem solved both ways. And so when, when we solve these three, in this case three equations, but if we add a z, it'll be four equations. If we solve all these at the same time, we'll be, we'll be um, the points that, that fall out of this, there'll only be of two different types. There should be only two different points, that, uh, two, different, um, two different values that come out. And the biggest of those values we'll call the max. And this, if, there's a, if there's another value, then that, that ends up as the min. And this is, this is uh, solving the constraint and maximizing or, uh, or minimizing. And so if there's only one that comes out, we'll actually be sure then that it is the maximum. But when there's two that comes out, I think we have an example where there's two different um, values that end up falling out of solving these equations. And then when there's two, then the other one is the, is the, uh, the minimum of the function. And so um, for the most, most times, though, it's only going to be one value that comes out. And when that one value comes out, it is the largest, the, 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 the maximum of the function. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's my solution method, the way when I do it, you don't have to do it that way, but um, let's work an example um, using this, and then right after that I'll show you the, the same example I think uh, using the, uh, just the original statement.